All right, great, guys. So it's good thinking that we are not in a rush about NVMe over Ethernet because it's not there yet, right? NVMe Rocky just started to happen. TCP is down the line. What is really happening today is NVMe Fiber Channel and our software-defined storage and the UCS, you know, converge infrastructure. They are doing the Rocky today and all that. So I'm glad that they got the time to talk about it is. So let me quickly tell you where we're doing with the IP fabric in the next uh, three minutes over here. You know, as I talked about the Hyperflex, you know, we're on the leader in there. And I'm sharing my slides, hopefully you're looking at it. And then, uh, you know, there is uh, TCP coming down the line. And, you know, a bunch of, uh, we have ACI fabric, we have NXOS fabric. Somebody asked about app dynamics and tetration workload security. All that could be built in in the future in, inside the architecture. I outlined here 10 problems or 10 adoption challenges. Don't time enough to go each one of them that some of these challenges are ready, already solved with the ACI uh, Ethernet fabric for the storage world, right? Endpoint security, low latency, right? Visibility, automation. So let me let me go quickly, few of them. Just like in a, a SAN Insight, we have Network Insight. Every packet at the hardware in ASIC in the cloud scale IP switches can be trapped and we can give you some, some information like here's your NVMe TCP session end to end. This is how it looks like on the analytics in there. If you look at the latencies, the age old question comes up, you know, about the buffering, the host latency, uh, you know, go through the different queuings in there, maybe a few microseconds. You look into the storage, that's where the majority of the latency is within the flash, you know, what kind of a flash obtain and all that. But what about the network? Should you go on the IP network when you're doing NVMe, TCP, or Rocky with a big buffers or a small buffers or smart buffers? So our, you know, if you're going to go with the big buffers, they can do over a uh, uh, milliseconds in there. So your latency is going to really go very high, right? So you want to do on-chip smart uh, smart buffering in there. And let me quickly show you how Cisco does that on 9K platforms, smart buffering on chip. As the packet arrives, you know, we take the buffers into smaller cells. And what we do is we start estimating the bandwidth of that particular flow. With the five tuples, we estimate the flow, and then we continuously monitor the advanced queue management in there. We figure it out if we can drop the packet or not. It's an NVMe packet. We don't want to drop it. Lossless Ethernet is configured on it. And if those buffers get full in there, you know, we can issue an X off request to stop the traffic, you know, pause frames in there. And then, you know, we can increase at the micro bus. We can increase the queuing length automatically buffers also. And then, you know, the decision is made to admit the packet. And this whole thing is a cut through. So that means as the packets are coming in, they're going out. I'm just slow it down for you. This is happening in like 900 nanoseconds, the whole thing. And then we go into the class of services. We can prioritize NVMe traffic or we can automatic prioritize with our dynamic packet process, uh, DPP features in there, for example. And then a scheduler comes in and the packet comes out and then the packet is shipped out over there. So this is the smart buffering working in conjunction with the advanced queue management automatic prioritization of the NVMe, small flows, mice flows, we can really uh, benefit out of this. Another beneficial is that with ACI or with NXOS, and this is a couple of last slides, NXOS automation you can do with multiple ways, right? It's the goal is to program the BGP, ISIS, OSPF, and all that. You can do CLI, you can do API, JSON. We have a container built in LXCs on the NXOS open. We can put Linux tools and all sorts of different things and external tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and all that, right? But for the storage guys, you want it very simple. You want a click solution. So ACI really fits very nicely. So the whole goal is to configure the protocols and what ACI does is creates an objects. And then what we can do is those objects are managed by data management engine. And then the ACI EPIC controller with your intent can say that configure this, put this logical model and ACI EPIC controller on all those dozens of switches, hundreds of switches can configure this. How does that help in the NVMe? If I want to configure NVMe Rocky today on ACI, all I have to do is configure NVMe Rocky click a button on it. And what it will do is it automatically creates an endpoint grouping contract host and it creates the maps of traffic perfectly nicely in there. So guys, again, as to concluding here that uh, NVMe next gen fabrics uh, get ready for not only deploying the fiber channel traffic, uh, you know, NVMe on it, but also start planning the, how you're going to tackle for certain workloads, the NVMe, Rocky, and TCP. And of course, Cisco is the only single vendor in the world which has both products, MDS. For 9K, we are continuing to enhance innovation. 64 gig is coming. Analytics is already enhanced. And in IP world, you know, we are going to be providing more in, uh, interactions between ACI, UCS, 
DCNM and the other platforms in there also. And of course, it will be all validated and certified by our Cisco validation solution teams. Chris is a director of that. Thank you very much.